The setup that I recommend for attempting solo high rounds on Outbreak is the Ray Gun, the Howard Shotgun with Deadwire, and the Toxic Growth Field Upgrade. The Shotgun with Deadwire specialises at killing Megatons, whereas the Ray Gun specialises at killing Panzers. All of the other enemy types are squishy enough to where you can use any of the two weapons to kill them. However, personally I mainly use the Ray Gun to kill Manglers and Armoured Zombies, whereas use a shotgun to kill Mimics, Tempests and normal Zombies. The Toxic Growth Field Upgrade is extremely useful for the Holdout and Defense Objective types, and is in my opinion better than the other Field Upgrades by several orders of magnitude. For the Defense Objective type, I recommend preemptively placing your Toxic Growths in a way that gives you the maximum protection. You can see that for this specific defense, I place two Toxic Growths on the stairs, and place the third on a choke point. Since the health of the machine is actually very high, you are more likely to fail this objective by dying, rather than by the machine being destroyed. This is why I recommend placing the bushes to protect yourself, rather than to protect the machine. If your defence location is in a more open area, you probably don't need to use any toxic growths at all. For this location specifically, you can see that I use the ray gun to kill anything which is attacking the machine. Any zombies which try to attack me will die to the bush. I recommend trying to kill as many zombies as possible with the ray gun to get a spare charge of the toxic growth field upgrade, in case one of your bushes runs out of health. For any special zombies which get caught in the bush, I recommend executing it quickly with the shotgun. Finally, if the health of the machine is still green, and you have 30-40 to 40 seconds left on the clock, you should be able to leave the area and the machine will still survive. Do this at your own risk, however. In this round specifically, I left the area after two panzers spawned, as the timer was almost up, and the health of the machine was high. The escort objective is one of the easier ones to complete, however, I do have a couple of tips. Firstly, the zombie spawns are triggered when the rover reaches certain points on its path, therefore if you move away from the rover, it will stop, meaning that the zombies will no longer spawn. This gives you a great opportunity to kill any megatons or panzers which have spawned in for example. Tempests are a huge pain as their attacks can EMP the rover. I recommend trying to proc deadwire on them with the shotgun, as this will stun them periodically, giving you enough time to finish them off. You should try and watch out for the Hellhounds, as they are actually capable of dealing a non-trivial amount of damage to the rover. Try and make them explode at a point which is not on the path of the rover, to minimise damage. That being said, the rover does have a lot of health, so make sure to prioritise your own health over the rovers. Finally, you should try and avoid using any toxic growths for this objective, so that you can stockpile them for the more difficult objectives. For the secure objective, you need to charge up rockets A and B. To fully charge up a rocket, you need to kill 16 zombies within the circle. Other enemy types do not count. On the higher rounds, you will get a large chunk of special and elite zombies that spawn. Given that they do not count towards charging up the rocket, I recommend that you just try to kite them by running around the circle, while prioritising killing the zombies to charge up the rocket. If you split too many megatons at once for example, you can find yourself getting overwhelmed. As soon as you hear that the first rocket has been fully charged, you should immediately run over to the second rocket. By the time you arrive at the second rocket, there should already be a chunk of zombies attacking it. Killing them will allow you to quickly reach 25% of your second rocket's maximum charge. At this point in time, there will probably be a few elite zombies chasing you. I recommend that you run away from the circle to regenerate health. During this time, zombies will begin to pile up at the rocket again. This will allow you to get another solid chunk of progress towards completion. Rinse and repeat this process until you finish the objective. Similar to the previous objective, you should try and avoid using any toxic growths. However, feel free to plant a toxic growth on top of the rocket if you are not confident on kiting the bosses while killing the zombies at the same time. The holdout objective is in my opinion the most difficult objective type, particularly on solo. However, toxic growth makes this challenge way easier compared to the other field upgrades available. I recommend that you have at least two charges before starting, ideally three. This shouldn't be a problem if you prioritise stockpiling charges in some of the early objectives. The general strategy is that you should try and find a location where the zombies can only come from one direction, and plant a long line of three bushes. This will give you a safe haven to retreat into if you start to get overwhelmed by the zombies. You should also try to kill as many zombies as possible with your normal weapons to try and get a spare charge. This is because your front bushes will most likely end up being destroyed during the objective, so being able to replant a spare one will help a lot. Fortunately, panzers don't seem to spawn in these objective types, at least they did not for me in the handful of round 50 games that I played. Megatons can easily be killed using the shotgun with deadwire. You can see here just how useful toxic growth is. As the pressure increased, I could easily retreat into the bushes, and the enemies would become too slow to attack me, giving me a chance to tip the scales back in my favour again. Even though this specific holdout is one of the easier ones to do, I tried this strategy in a variety of different holdouts, and it was very effective in all the situations, even in that tiny holdout which everyone despises doing. If you do end up going down for whatever reason, I recommend staying down for as long as possible as this allows you to burn through the timer. 
If the timer expires while you are down, you will be revived without consuming your self-revive. For the retrieve challenge, I recommend that you have three decoys at hand, as well as a cruise missile in case you get into a sticky situation. The time that you have is generous for this challenge, so don't feel like you have to rush in order to complete it. If in doubt, play it safe. When you reach the first canister, try and purge it without alerting any zombies, and while the animation is playing, clear the area using the ray gun. However, if the zombies are alerted beforehand, just clear the zombies first before purging, although this is slower. Once you have picked up the canister, you should walk back to the truck while killing any zombies which chase you at the same time. Given that the special ability can be recharged extremely quickly, you should use it very liberally. The special ability can also stun special and elite enemies, which is a very useful perk. To save some time, rather than killing a Megaton, you should simply split it, and then run away from it while it is splitting. Before placing the canister into the truck, you should throw a decoy to be safe. You should also use the ability just beforehand if you happen to have it available. Finally, you should prioritise killing any panzers if they start to chase you. This is because unlike Megatons, they are way more mobile and can sneakily hit you and down you while you are trying to place down the canister. Remember that special and elite enemies ignore decoys and monkeys. The HVT challenge is by far the easiest one to complete. This challenge is a great opportunity to refill your toxic growth charges if you use them all in a previous holdout or defence challenge. If the HVT is a Megaton, you should use the shotgun to kill it, as Deadwide does bonus damage to it. Else, you should use the ray gun. If the HVT flies into a building with tight spaces, try to lure out the HVT rather than going inside the building. Otherwise, you are introducing an unnecessary element of risk. 